Inside CNN, this was a week like no other. The sudden removal of CNN boss Jeff Zucker has rattled this news outlet to its core. Staffers are confused, angry, and concerned about what might come next. So let me try to explain it based on my reporting from inside this very organization. Since Wednesday morning's resignation shock, I've talked with at least 100 people here at all levels, as well as sources on the outside who represent all the players. And the dominant question that I'm getting from inside CNN is why? Why'd this happen? This is the ugliest shakeup at CNN since the days Ted Turner was still walking the halls. Zucker was in charge one minute and he was gone the next, so why? Even employees who didn't like him are mad because this made CNN look bad. So they want to know why. They want to know what happened. But most staffers did like him. Many loved him. Many felt Zucker was the best boss they'd ever worked for. They would walk into war zones for him, and sometimes they did. And in return, Zucker protected them, defended them, cheered for them. He was like a heat shield. That's the best way I can explain it. He shielded his staff from all sorts of heat, from corporate interference, from ratings pressures, from presidential threats. Zucker was always on, seemingly always awake and online, always watching always quick with words of encouragement or a sharp question for a guest or a better idea for a homepage headline. He cared deeply and every employee knew it. Even if they didn't like his story idea or his solution to a problem, they knew that he cared. And that's not always the case in media. Leaders don't always eat, sleep, breathe, live the news, but Zucker did. I mean, this was the headline when he first joined CNN nearly 10 years ago. It says the guy has news in his veins, and that was exactly right. He knows news. Now, I haven't spoken with him since last week, but I'm sure he knows his exit is a big news story. It's been front page news, in fact. So let's try to answer the question on the minds of everyone I've been talking with. Why was he forced out? Well, the big part of the story that was underappreciated on Wednesday, all this news coverage on Wednesday, the big part that was underappreciated, the backdrop to all of this, is a looming mega merger. CNN and HBO and the rest of Warner Media are being spun off right now by AT&T. It is step one in the formation of a new company, Warner Brothers Discovery. The current CEO of Discovery, David Zaslav, will run the new company. The deal is most likely two to three months from taking effect assuming the government and the shareholders all sign off. But assuming is dangerous when it comes to the government. The regulatory review process is complicated. It is a big source of stress for the executives. AT&T and Discovery are determined to get this deal done. It is the top priority. It is, frankly, all that matters to the management right now. They don't want anything to go wrong. And it doesn't seem like anything is going to go wrong. It seems like the deal is going to take effect. But that's the background for Jeff Zucker's exit. Now, what was in the foreground? Well, as these headlines say, he resigned over a relationship with his key lieutenant, Allison Gullist, the head of marketing and PR for CNN. Many people inside this company believe it would not have come to this without Chris Cuomo. So let's unpack that. As, as the Wall Street Journal reported, Chris Cuomo's legal team raised questions about Zucker's relationship. They brought it to the forefront. Think back one year to the scandals surrounding New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. The governor hurt his brother, Chris, and that caused headaches for Zucker. For months and months, there were debates about whether CNN did the right thing by keeping Chris Cuomo on the air in prime time. There were lots of debates about it right here inside CNN. Eventually, Zucker decided to fire Chris. No severance, no payout. And that's when Cuomo called in lawyers. He wanted the money. Someone brought up Zucker and Gullist. Were they a couple? Were they concealing it? Were they violating the company's code of conduct? Wasn't Zucker guilty, just like Cuomo was guilty? See, the way Cuomo's detractors see it, he exacted revenge. It's as if he said, you took me down, so I'm taking you down. Cuomo's allies totally reject this view. They say Chris's hands are clean. Either way, Zucker did have a secret, and that secret came out because of Cuomo's firing and the tug of war that followed. Zucker was asked if he was in a romantic relationship with Gullist. He said yes, but he had not disclosed it before. Now, inside CNN, people had wondered, were they together? But there's a big difference between wondering and knowing. What people did know, and I'm channeling the feelings of many sources when I say this, is that Zucker and Gullist made each other better at work. 
they were an incredibly effective team. She was essentially his chief of staff. She could have been in line to run CNN, but now all that's gone. And you can draw a straight line from Andrew Cuomo's downfall to Zucker's. It is almost Shakespearean. When Zucker's boss, Warner Media CEO Jason Kylar, found out about the relationship last week, he brought it to his boss, AT&T Chief John Stanky. My sense is that Zucker knew there would be fallout because he knew he had violated the code of conduct by not disclosing his relationship with his subordinate right away. But he did not expect to get fired. This was, in the minds of many on Team Zucker, a 15-yard penalty, but AT&T threw him out of the game altogether for it. Kylar said Zucker had to resign or he would be terminated. Zucker tried to stay on for a transition period, a month, even just a week, but he was told no. He was out instantly. Which brings us back to the question inside here. Why? CNN's Dana Bash said it to Kylar directly during a tense staff meeting Wednesday night. She said it felt like the punishment didn't fit the crime. That's the prevailing view inside CNN. But Zucker did break the rules. News outlets hold others accountable for breaking the rules all the time. And beyond that, in this case, I wouldn't say timing is everything, but it's a lot of the things. AT&T wants and needs that deal to go through. Doesn't want any mess, any complication. So Zucker is out. And CNN now continues without him. And these headlines capture the situation. Staffers are angry. They're angry at Warner Media. They're angry at Cuomo. And they're wondering, what happens now? We know that Kylar has appointed three steady, reliable hands, three longtime members of Zucker's leadership team, to run CNN until Discovery takes over. Michael Bass, Amy Antelis, Ken Jouts. They know what to do, and they're doing it every day, keeping CNN humming along. When this deal closes, uh, probably April or May, Discovery will name a new boss, a new head of CNN. I'm told by sources that Discovery views this as a fresh start for CNN. And maybe in a year, people will look back and say this was a good thing for CNN, new leadership. But it's not what the staffers here wanted, and certainly not like this.